Good morning everyone. I am Dr. Sumedha Ghoshal, a second year PG resident in the Department of Radio Diagnosis of NRS Medical College and Hospital. My title for paper presentation is a case report on primary pulmonary synovial sarcoma. Case discussion. A 41 year old female presented with a dry cough for 7 months, progressively increasing shortness of breath and right side of pleuritic chest mark for 2 months. There was no history of hemoptysis, no history of past exposure to asbestos, no recent cold or sore throat or fever or any allergic triggers. On examination of the respiratory system, respiratory rate was found out to be 25 breaths per minute with SpO2 of 98%. On inspection, there was decreased movement of right hemithorax, palpation showed decreased vocal flemitis, auscultation showed decreased vesicular breath sounds and decreased vocal resonance on the right side with dull note on percussion on the right side. Examination of other systems were within normal limits. A subsequently a chest x was performed which showed a smooth, well-defined, homogeneous opacity noted occupying the middle and lower zones of the right lung. There was no mediastinal shifting present. The left lung appeared normal. Vertebra, ribs and other bones and soft tissues appeared normal. A contrast enhanced CT scan was performed which showed a large, well-defined, well-marginated, heterogeneously enhancing right lung mass with definite pleural extension was present and internal cystic and necrotic areas were present. In the next slide, we can see the definite pleural extension of the mass and in this slide, we can see the progressive compression of the right main bronchus by the mass. An ultrasound was performed and a well-defined hypoechoic heterogeneous sol was noted in the right lung with internal cystic necrotic areas. On color Doppler, the solid components of the mass were taking vascularity. An MRI was performed and in this MRI in the sagittal and the axial G2 weighted image, it shows a heterogeneously hyperintense multilobulated lesion in the right lung. The hyperintense areas on T2 correspond to cystic, hemorrhagic, necrotic areas or necrotic areas containing mixoid material. An actual T1 scan shows a well-defined multilobulated lesion with heterogeneous intermediate signal. Intermediate signal means the signal intensity corresponds to the signal intensity of the parietal muscle layer. Along with that, there were internal hyperechoic areas, probably hemorrhagic areas noted in the right lung. This was a coronal T2 and the actual T2 weighted image which was showing definite uh, invasion of the tumor into the parietal muscular layer. We can see the ribs are definitely involved along with the parietal muscle layers. A CT guided true cut biopsy was performed from the lung sol which revealed sheets of spindle cells with vesicular nuclei, nuclear overlapping, scanty cytoplasm and atypical mitosis. Occasional gland-like epithelial architecture was also noted. Features were highly suggestive of synovial sarcoma biphasic variant with cystic change. However, other possibilities of other high-grade sarcomas like carcinosarcoma, fibrosarcomas, PNSDs cannot be excluded. Subsequently, an immunohistochemistry was performed and on immunohistochemistry, the cells were positive for TLE1, BCL2, CD99 and focally positive for cytokeratin and epithelial membrane antigen. Negative for S100, calretinin, STAT6 and synoptophysin. The image above shows the positively BCL2 staining of the spindle cells. Based on the histopathological examination and the immunohistochemistry, a diagnosis of PPSS that is primary pulmonary, pleuropulmonary synovial sarcoma biphasic variant was made. Further imaging with PET scan and MRI of the brain was performed to note for any metastatic lesions. The patient was then put under doxorubicin based chemotherapeutic regimen which consisted of cyclophosphamide, doxorubicin, dacarbazin, vincristin and PEG GCSF chemo regimen. Case discussion. Primary pulmonary synovial sarcomas are extremely rare neoplasm. It consists of only 0.1 to 0.5 percent of all lung neoplasms. The diagnosis is made only after metastatic sarcomas from other soft tissues of the body 
and other primary parenchymal sarcomas like malignant fibrous histiocytoma, leomyosarcoma, fibrous sarcoma, hemangio, pericytoma, and sarcomatide carcinomas have been ruled out. It chiefly affects the young and middle-aged population with equal sex predilection. PPSS can metastasize to the bone, liver, skin, CNS, and even the breast tissue. It has four subtypes, the monophasic fibrous variant, the monophasic epithelia, biphasic, poorly differentiated. Out of this, the monophasic subtype was the most common. Our case was a case of biphasic variant. Cytogenic study with reverse transcriptase PCR helps to differentiate monophasic and biphasic forms. Synovial sarcoma is characterized by reciprocal chromosomal translocation between chromosome X and chromosome 18. P11.2 and Q11.2 gene focuses which results from fusion of SYT gene on chromosome 80 to either of the two genes SSXX and SSX2 on chromosome X. SYT SSX1 gene is associated with biphasic subtype and prognosis is bad whereas the monophasic subtype may have either of the following two transfusion transcripts SYT SSX1 or SYT SSX2. All tumors with SYTSS2 gene shows monophasic morphology. The prognosis of PPSS is very poor with an overall 5 year survival rate of only 50%. Conclusion So, primary pulmonary synovial sarcoma is an extremely rare and aggressive tumor. Diagnosis requires the combination of radiology, pathology, immunohistochemistry, and cytological analysis. It has been found out that the treatment is a multimodal approach which includes resection. If the tumors are very large, then chemotherapy and radiotherapy is performed. Though the, role of, though the role of radiotherapy is not well established. But PPSS is highly chemosensitive to iphosphamide and doxorubicin based chemo regimen. These were my references. Thank you for patient hearing.